Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the bonus episode of Ocarina of Time. Now you'll see we're back at Lon Lon Ranch, and Ingu... Ingu? <laughs> not not. Ingo is looking a little bit different. Hi there, how are you? I'm Ingo, I feel so honoured to be allowed to work here. Yes, he's he's been reformed. As in, he has been reformed, whether he truly has is a different thing. Anyway, what we're really here for is for a little mini-game with Malon. Thank you very much for the other day. I haven't even asked your name yet. Really? Doctor? That's what I thought. You're the fairy boy fairy boy from the forest. Fairy boy from the forest. That was years ago. Do you remember me? You do? I sure it was because remember it, but, oh. Let's try that again. You do. I'm sure it was you because Epona remembered you. Oh, I have to tell you about Mr. Ingo. He was afraid that the evil king might find out that Epona had been taken away. It really upset him. But one day, all of a sudden, he went back to being a normal, nice person. I can't believe it, but peace is returning to this ranch. It's all because of you. I owe you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Well, that wasn't what I came here for, but that was actually quite interesting. I never really knew about that. How is Epona doing? If you play Epona's song with your Ocarina, she will surely come to you. Please come back to the ranch wherever you want to practice riding. Indeed. There we go. I'm recording this, what, like... Probably close to a month after my final... Well, yeah, it's probably like three weeks since I recorded the final episode, so I've absolutely forgotten how to play Ocarina of Time, so you'll have to be a little bit... Bit forgiving on me there. Also, I haven't recorded or spoken on open. Okay, I've spoken since then, but obviously. Oh, there, she's inside somehow. Um, but I mean, like, I haven't done reading on camera and stuff, and I'm gonna you know, suddenly have sucked again. Oh, here we go. I heard about. Uh, but <laughs> Proving my point here fantastically, aren't I? How about trying your skill with a pony on an obstacle course? I'll time you for two laps. It's pretty challenging. If you miss jumping a fence in the proper order, you'll fail. How about it? Do you wanna try? The current record is 50 seconds. First, try to beat this record. If you can beat the record, I'll give you a present. Give it your best shot, okay? So this is kind of similar to what we did with Ingo, except you have fences as well, and you can't go around the fences. I think if you go around the fences, it also isn't really possible to do it in a decent amount of time. Remember the important thing with fences, oh, which I've cocked up. Right, hold on, no. Basically, you've got to time your carrots quite well, so you use them just before you go over a fence, and I really didn't do that there, and so I ran out of all of them. Right, let's try that again. Come on, and ball sack. Right, I've got, to, I've got to circle around here is what i got to do. And there we go. What do you silly horse? That was down by... I okay, I don't think we're going to meet 30 seconds on this run. But we don't try to beat 30 seconds, we're trying to beat 50 seconds, which I also don't think we're going to do. Right, I've got to be nice and straight on. What? You idiot horse! Ugh. There we go. Yeah, you got to really just make sure you're going maximum beans as you approach a uh, fence. So probably don't use up carrots unless you've really got them to spare in these sections when you're going around the edge, because you'll just need them for actually crossing the fences. Well, one more lap. Good, we did one lap in more than 30 seconds over the alleged time limit, so... Yeah, it's all about kind of like using your boosts here to. There we go. Oh, you gotta, you gotta time it, and I did not time it well there. I'll admit it. Fifty seconds looks like it's gonna be a bit of a stretch at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. J ladies and gentlemen. God, you really do forget how to let's play when you haven't done it for a while. I mean, even well, it's not even just let's play; it's actually speaking the English that I've spoken all my life. Dear me. Wow, great. You sarcastic bastard. Your time was one fifty-three. You and Epona are a great team. Let's try that again. Oh, so that's worth noting. Those wee ones, you don't have to be going at full uh, beans to jump over them. You can just be running at them. You don't have to have just boosted. That makes a hell of a difference. Right, we've done one lap in, well, what, 24? So, we might just make 50. We're on a decent pace, actually. You do want to kind of use up some boost in between these, but you just want to make sure you've got enough to, um, to do this section, because you want to be going up to this section with a full boost bar, because otherwise you'll be screwed. This is actually going to be quite close, this one. Holy shit, am I going to do it? Oh, balls are out of boost! Knobs! Oh, I would have had that if I didn't... <gasps> okay, you know, it's a great improvement on last time, so we'll just we'll try it again. I mean, I wasn't quite going to make that one, but if I... Oh. <laughs> I keep mistiming it on this last one. Right, we're actually on a really good pace here. Once again, as long as I don't cock up this last one, I've got enough beans left here. I should just about make this. Oh my god, it's gonna be really good. Yes! 
Oh, I don't actually know what happens if you get it on 50, but 49 is better than 50, so there we go. Let's get our award. You have to do it damn near perfect. You did it! 49 is the new course record. I have to give you a present to commemorate your new record. The present is a little too heavy to give you here, so I'll have it delivered to your house. Bet you can't wait to see it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, and we'll deal with that in a little bit. That's item one completed. Item two! Time to head over to Gerudo Valley. So, if we go into the carpenter's tent here, then you'll see all the carpenters have been freed, and they all say basically the same thing about, oh, it was Gandalf behind the thieves, but there's also... Behind the thieves, behind the Gerudo. But there's also this guy, the running man. Do you remember when we were a kid? If we talked to him, he says, the best time to go from here to the bridge, bridge in the Lost Woods was 2 minutes 38. That's my record. Will you challenge my record? Yes, I will. Excellent, then. You'll go first. I'll give you a head start. Now go. So as soon as we leave... Oh, no shit, it starts right away. So, we just need to get back to... The Lost Woods. As he says, he's called the Running Man, not the Equestrian Man, so you can't do this with a Pona. Um, as far as I'm aware, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, certainly... You know what, let's just try it. No, actually, no, let's not try it. Let's just walk. Because basically just to get across Hyrule Field to the woods. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to kind of keep rolling. I think I think this can be done in something like 1 minute 40 or something outrageous. There's like a speedrunning trick where you basically just do this. And that's apparently... Oh, bugger. Let's, let's check a sign. That's normally faster than um, even rolling is like side jumping repeatedly, but I can't be honest with it. Also, this would be incredibly dizzying. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, some people might notice at this point in terms of how we're dressed. Mirror shield, red tunic, gold, silver gauntlets, and importantly, not golden gauntlets. We... This game is a bizarre one. It's one of those games which just, when you beat the game, it doesn't save. So it doesn't save you having beaten the game, it also doesn't save how the fuck far you got um, at that point. So, having beaten the final boss, it then reloaded my last save, which was uh, shortly after that cutscene where we revealed... Well, before, actually, that cutscene where we revealed who Sheik was. Um, which is vaguely ridiculous um, and slightly irritating. Oh, I've come the wrong damn way. Oh, I think I may have fucked myself. God, the fuck. Oh, that Poe really made me jump. I don't know why. Jesus Christ. Um, we're still making decent time, though. Um, and this does tie in. So the the, the prize for um, doing the opponent thing was delivered back to our childhood bed. And this is a race back to Kokiri Forest. So it's, it's a handy way of getting back here. The Running Man is also a very interesting one. He is... Who remembers Il Piantissimo from Super Mario Sunshine? He's wearing, like, a Pianta helmet the whole time. If you take off his Pianta helmet, which you can only look inside it by basically looking at the game files or using cheats or whatever, if you do that, he is the running man underneath. It's a nice little tr nod to this game from Sunshine. Anyway, there we go. We made it in way under his record in 155. But here he is. Whew. Whew. You did quite well. Well, you couldn't beat me. Your time was 155, but I beat you by just one second. Oh, you'll have to challenge me again sometime. Goodbye, then. Yes, he's the source of a lot of irritation for a lot of people. You cannot beat him, however fast you do that. Even if you cheat to do it instantly, he will be there. And to say you got there a second before you, he will never give you any form of reward for doing it. And it's one of the most infuriating things ever if you've not come across it. Because you're like, oh, damn it, there must be some trick I'm missing. There isn't. This game's just shitty. And is that a Godzilla breathing fire on someone down to the left there? I'd never noticed that before. Oh, well, anyway, if we go inside our house, we will see what we want from the ranch. Yes, we literally ran an entire... What? Won an entire cow. Quite how they got it here with Horus is quite remarkable as well. So the advantage of this is you can play a bonus song to it and get free milk off it, I guess. But that's kind of pointless because you can do that with any cow. We just need to find one. I suppose it's knowing whether Royce is one. And so that's some of the stuff done for now. What we need to do next is sleep in our bed. Because that lets us give us the option of reliving a battle. So, if you look on the bottom screen, which I will bring up to the top screen. Except I can't remember the bottom. Is it? Oh dear. Uh, hmm. There we go. It is F9. Um, yes, so we have the option to replay any boss battle. Except for, confusingly, not any of the Ganon ones. Um, so this will let you fight any boss battle up to Twin Rover. Regardless of whether you've got this far in the game or whether it's saved or not, you will never have the option of facing against Ganondorf in this because it won't let you save after it, so there you have it. But you'll notice there is another option there. There is space for a ninth one, and that's actually what we're going to do now. Weirdly, I'm going to do all of them at the moment off camera, and I'll explain why in a second.
And so, with that, if I bring up the bottom screen again, you will notice now you have the option of Gauntlet. Which is every single boss in a row, with a little bit of a twist to it. And so, I'm going to try that in a second. I may well not complete it. It's not the easiest of things. But first, oh, there's something else awful I want to show off too. Ladies and gentlemen, put on your 3D glasses now. Oh yes, it's time for 3D. I figured this was the best way to demonstrate it. God, this looks like absolute shit. Everything's like a shade of brown. Wonderful, let's roll with the boss gauntlet. So this is kind of why I also wanted to go through them on my own first, because I didn't want to basically show up. I had to do that to have unlocked it. Didn't really hugely want to do it on off camera. Well, I mean, completely edited out, but I basically didn't want to spend an entire episode just doing bosses over and over again. And I figured, yes, bosses would be perhaps the best opportunity to demonstrate the 3D thing, because it's probably the most extreme the 3D comes in the game. Because the bosses are big, and they're like cool scenes with a lot going on, so it's it, it's a nice demo, actually, of it. Um, obviously, as I stated in the final episode last, I'm playing this on an emulator. Normally, you don't have the option for red, blue 3D in 3DS, it's just the slidey thing on the side. Um, but here... I suppose we had to go for it, um, because you can you can set it to that, or you can set it to side-by-side -side 3D. And I looked a lot into side-by-side -side 3D, and whether I could actually use that to make a YouTube 3D video, as in one that YouTube will... Bloody hell, come as easy. One that YouTube would recognise as 3D, and you could turn it on and off, which would be great for people who haven't got 3D glasses, because otherwise it's going to look even more like shit than it already does. But there's a reason why I didn't do that. So, I'll talk about that in a sec. Whenever you beat a boss on Boss Rush, the timer keeps going because fuck you and there's a choice of two chests. I will for each chest explain what's in them. The small one here contains bombs, the large one contains either Deku Seeds or a Deku Stick. Honestly, I think the Deku the bombs are probably going to be the most useful here perhaps for King Dodongo. Neither of those are a great choice, but hey, we took no damage in that obviously, so we can proceed on. Much like when I fought them earlier, which you obviously didn't see because it was off camera, but it gives you vaguely the items you were likely to have had at the time. It's not what you actually had, so we'll have way fewer heart containers than we had, for example. Uh, I'm really glad I got bombs there, otherwise this fight would be real interesting. It doesn't do that, as what I said there, on Boss Rush. That's the interesting thing. Um, it only gives you crucial items, like the boomerang or something like that, that there's no option for getting in, in this way. With this guy, I guess we would have just had to use bomb flowers. And he does look quite cool. It's a shame everything's just yellow through this, though. I guess that's the issue with those colors. Oh, we have got... Oh, no, we haven't got any Deku nuts. We've got the lens of truth, weirdly enough. Um, let's put the old bombs on there. I've not got a huge number of bombs, but I should... In fact, I should only need three for this thing. He actually looks fantastic in 3D, I will admit. I do wonder. Do let me know in the comments if you're actually watching this in 3D. Um, I can't imagine many people have got pairs of these glasses hanging around, but, you know, on the off chance that you have, I figured I would do it. And it's entertaining enough. But yes, yeah, so you do carry all your health through all of these things, so be aware of that. Um, that try and be careful on the earlier bosses, where you don't want to like just do dumb shit and potentially lose health. It could really screw you over later on some of the harder ones. But yes, you never have... The game just gives you the standard amount of heart containers. It assumes you've not got any pieces of heart off the beaten track, therefore... Um, Therefore, it can be a little bit harder than it actually was in the game. Obviously, we don't have fairies or anything like that. It does give you your potential for recovery stuff in the various chests. So, this time, we've got options in both. These are just random what you get from it. The small con chest either contains a recovery heart, which isn't great, an empty bottle, which... or a heart container, and that's what we want. The large chest has a choice of Deku Nuts, Deku Stick, empty bottle, or a recovery heart. So on balance, the small chest is better. In most of them, on balance, God, that lava is a disgusting colour, but they can't really use red, because that's, that's the issue. Red and blue have to be used for the anaglyph um, colouring. I'm going to take the small chest. Uh, they have to be used for the anaglyph colouring, so it really doesn't leave many other colours. It basically leaves that area between... Oh, uh, recovery, huh? Uh, that's not great. Um, yeah, it kind of leaves the green to, to yellow part of the spectrum for actually, you know, doing colour. But the 3D is cool. But yeah, so I looked into how to do it for YouTube, and basically YouTube videos in 3D is a really dodgy thing, and it would still just do this red-green filter anyway, there's no way... It can do side-by-side -side 3D, but that's even more awkward than this. At least this, anyone can just buy the glasses and bloody do it, whereas with side-by-side -side 3D you need to have either a VR setup or a decent TV or something like that to actually view that in. So I figured this was the best way of doing it. Right, I need to change around my inventory a little bit. So let's put the boomerang on there. Mm, that'll have to be it for now. There's a little bit of a cheekier trick for doing this, but if you've got Deku Nuts. 
Man, yeah, the, the big bosses, actually, I will, I will say, they do, they do show off the 3D quite nicely. Come back to me, Boomerang. There we go. Also, I didn't say it in last time because I didn't do it, but on King Dodongo, be real careful, because if your shield burns up, then you end up with no shield for Baron Aid, which can be a bit of a problem. Um, oh, interesting. This one's struggling with effects as well. Never had that problem when we were actually playing it. I guess it's probably also even harder of a taxing thing because it's doing the 3D as well now. Yeah, killing these little barriers that attach to it can be much faster with the... Usual words, Doctor, with Deku Nuts, because it kills them instantly, can kill a couple of them instantly. Now here's the fun part of this boss. Just gotta randomly chuck it and hope for an opening. No, 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 no. Yep. When I was playing this on my own, like, as in just a few minutes ago, oh, yes, I got through that bit almost instantly. It was really handy. You can also get uh, the pots in the corner of the, of the room do have healing in it, and you can actually use them here because there's only a small window in which you can actually hit Baronades, um, as in here it will work, and then once you've done a couple of jump attacks to him here, he fucks off into the ground, and at this point, he hit, definitely. Are they sp what? Are they all just replaced with rupees? If so, that's... Oh, game, you're so mingy. Uh, it saw me come. Oh, oh, that was really cool in the three dash. Oh my god! I mean, it's, I'm being electrocuted, so it's not that cool, but it kind of is in its own electrical way. Right, we should be nearly done with Baronade down. Was that hit really? Ugh. But yeah. So, <laughs> what makes this even more annoying is the fact that in order to put on my 3D glasses, I had to take off my actual seeing eye glasses. So this looks even more garbage to you than to me. I think I'm going to make, as well, just so it's not awful, I'm going to try and make the visualizer just black and white, so at least that doesn't look disgustingly colored. Here, once again, so this small chest contains an empty bottle or a heart container, 50-50, and this large chest contains an empty bottle, a recovery heart, or Deku nuts. So, on balance, getting that heart container would be worthwhile from the small chest. Hey, we got a heart container. That's very useful going forwards. Let's roll. Yeah, I was trying to think if I, if I could do a, like an anaglyph 3D thing like by sliding the bits of the visualizer left and right. Uh, it feels like it's going to be more effort than it's worth in the long run. Oh, but it would have looked potentially kind of cool. Anyway, remember to stick, trigger Phantom again. We have to enter and then try and leave. And here I'm going to see if I can pick up. I didn't on my first run, but I'm going to pick up. Uh, in the comments I was told about there's a difference between Phantom Ganon and his phantoms. No, that wasn't clear. The fake one and the real one when they're coming through the curtains. Coming through the curtains? God, I'm talking complete shit. Coming through the paintings. Um, apparently the real one is darker. So I'm going to try and see if I can spot that, but I don't know. But at least this one is actually really hard to take damage on. I think the only ones I'm worried about is Volvagia. There. Volvagia can output a fair bit of damage. If I fuck it up, Morpha can output a lot of damage. And Bongo Bongo is always a fucking mess. Like, if I don't get Bongo Bongo done in the, next, in like the first few seconds of the battle. Right, do either of them look darker? I absolutely cannot tell. I want to see this one look darker. Nope. I guess it's really not easy to tell with the 3D as well. But remember the old tactic here, if you stand on one of these Triforce things in the bottom, you know, aiming around in the first person also looks quite nice in the 3D. It's a shame, as I say, there isn't a better way of rendering this for the best kind of effect. He's on the piss. So that means he probably was probably should have guessed that many wasn't really- Oh, what a shot! Oh, that was fantastic. But yeah, the 3D effect is actually quite cool. And do let me know in the comments if you actually went out of your way to get 3D glasses. If so, I'm so happy with that. Right. Either of them darker. The one on the right? Nope. No, I think it's... Yeah, and any slight differences in tone I think are completely destroyed by the scariest... Stere ste scariescopic filter. Um, stereoscopic filter. Right, at least I can see both of these, so let's see who becomes real. And it's gonna be you! Wallop! Right, you should now detach. There we go. Now, this stage... I'm just gonna have to play it really carefully, basically. Stay as far away from it as I can, and... Oh, that doesn't look great. Oh, brilliant, actually. I mean, it doesn't look great, like, in terms of the actual visuals of it. Basically, I don't know whether it's my glasses that are crap or whether it's just the way the color's done generally, but I see really bad ghosting with my right eye, the blue eye. Um, basically, the red eye, if I, so if, I, if I close my right eye, leaving only the left eye, I probably shouldn't do that during this, just, <laughs> if I close that eye, it looks fine. There's a bit of a ghosted image in blue. Whereas if I close my right eye, I don't see the way around, it's the red eye, it's my left eye that's got bad ghosting. Um, and I say, perhaps it's just my glasses. They were, like... £2.50 off Amazon. I got posh ones, actually. I say, right. Let's, let's qualify that. They have plastic frames, rather than just being like the old paper-style ones that you used to get back in the 90s. Um, but I was like, I want something vaguely comfortable. Never know when you might need this again. I might play Minecraft in, in 3D. I think I've nearly got it now. Yes! That actually went really well. So here is the only time I would propose getting the large chest. If only because, once again, the large chest contains... 
the chance for the heart container. I'd always go for that. So the small chest contains an empty bottle, the long shot, or the big quiver. Mm -hmm, kind of useful. And the large chest contains the giant knife, a recovery heart, or a heart container. Recovery heart would be, I mean, I've taken a heart of damage, I think, from Baronade, so a recovery heart, oh no, because I healed that up with the thing and I took no damage from him. Giant's knife would be handy, heart container would be handy. Um, definitely, so it's obviously, when I say giant's knife, that is the breakable one, um, so it's less than perfect, but it's still useful. Um, where did, yeah, there we go, Fuck me. Um, so this time, yes, I want the large chest. Come on, heart container. Oh, empty fuck off. Well, that's a real piss take because there's absolutely nothing I could do with an empty bottle at all. I don't know why it gives you an empty bottle. It's such a mingy move. Oh, uh, well, let's move on to Volvagio. This could be an interesting one. I'm just going to have to play it really carefully. I think the one I'm actually worried about is Morpha just because of how much damage Morpha can output. And I say Bongo Bongo is a bit of a mixed bag and Twin Rover just takes ages, but you're taking... Basically, no damage in it. Oh, God, have I not got a red tunic? Oh, fuck me. Oh, that doesn't seem fair. Oh, good, I have got a red tunic. Ooh, I also got the mirror shield. That's weird. Oh, God, I had a moment there. I was like, I'm going to be completely fucked. But we should be fine. Can't even tell the difference between the tunic colors with these glasses. I think that's red. Who knows? <laughs> you changed change your moldy tunic for a slightly less moldy tunic. Yeah, definitely having the 3D on makes it a bit harder on the old the old processor for scenes like this. But these are the best ones in the game to demonstrate it. Ah, Vulva Vagina strikes again. Oh, there's a fun story about Volvagia. Um, that's an interesting bit of beta stuff that's in the game, which I was going to tell at this point. Volvagia flies around and kind of flies freely and its whole body follows its arc. And it's quite a complex bit of movement for a relatively early 3D game. It was modelled by Nintendo by using... The R-Wings from Star Fox 64 or Lilac Wars, whatever you call it, depends on where you're from. Um, to the point where there is a completely functional, not completely functional, but there is a very much functional um, R-Wing in the game. You have to use like cheat codes or something to enable it. Remember, you can shoot him for a bit of extra damage. Um, you just can't do the final blow with the bone arrows. I don't want to waste my arrows too much, actually. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to do that because I have finite arrows here and I really want to save them for... Oh, bongo, bongo. My head said dingo, dingo. Fuck's sake, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm going stupid already. Well, I've been back recording for like an, an hour and I'm already losing my damn mind. It's not been an hour. It's not even been close to an hour. Oh, balls! I missed a shot on him there and I honestly can't tell if he's done damage to me. Oh, I've actually got very few hearts left. Yeah, I'm not going to make this. Uh, I just realised now actually seeing my hearts. Because uh, you can't tell with the, the, the fucking 3D glasses on. Even though I think, yeah, the bottom screen's just in normal full colour. But obviously my eyes aren't. Okay, need to be more careful. Um, yes, uh, but yeah, so this R-Wing, you can summon it, it'll fly around Kokiri Forest and shoot lasers. <laughs> it's quite cool. Um, or wherever you actually summon it. And it's designed to test L the L-targeting system as a whole, and specifically how it worked with the most complicated movements in the game, which are for veggies. Right, now I've just got to play this very carefully, make sure I just get to him in time. I'm not going to get to him in time. Nope. Oh, that was bloody close. Oh, I didn't like that. Ooh, yeah, but I'm going to be there. Right, one more round of hits will do it, but I've just got to be very careful in the in-between time that I don't make a twat of myself. Oh, that was cool, with the particle effects coming off. Even Navi moving around, ooh, does look very cool. I'm just going, eh! let him do his thing. I can't get him if he's, you can't get me if he's underneath me. So I think he does like move towards you when he's doing this free moving stuff, so you can see, oh, that's, that's some good 3D act. Fuck, did I just walk into him? Did that do a half and a heart of heart? Wait, what? <laughs> I don't even know what I said there. Half and a heart of health, no. I've confused the shit out of myself. Heart and a half of health. Well, if I get a chance to actually hit him here, I can hopefully do him in, depending on where he spawns. That one there. Right, come on, do him in, do him in. Bugger! Well, there I go. Needed to get more heart containers, that's the issue there. Well, Morpha's a crap boss anyway. Bongo Bongo's tiny, and Twin Rover is kind of fun, but also takes ages. So, that's, that's not a terrible outcome, all things considered. I don't want to bother showing off the whole thing. All it does is just gives you... Tells you what time it was that you did it in, and then, and then that's it, really. Um, you can beat that time, though. You don't actually get anything for doing it. As with anything I'm showing in a bonus video, if it was a skull teller or a heart container or something, I would have already got it. One more thing to show off. So, let's play... Oh, bollocks. Let's play the Serenade of Water. I'm going to turn this nonsense off as well. Or should I leave it on? I don't know. 
No, I actually need to see for what I'm about to do. So let's walk over to Lake Walk, warp over to Lake Hylia, and go into the fishing hole. God, my eyes are actually all fucked up from those glasses. Like, if I look at the white of my computer screen and close my eyes and stuff, one of them looks too blue and the other looks too red. Oh, it's actually doing my head in slightly. Oh. Anyway, we've come to the fishing hole, so we need to talk to this guy and say, let's go fishing. He'll explain to me how to do it every time. But, yes, I understand. But we're not going to go fishing, confusingly enough. No, we're going to say, I want to quit and return him the rod. And then we're going to leave. Then we're going to come back in again and do that whole process again. We're actually going to do that three times in total. I've still never been able to fully verify this. I've done a lot of research into it and I can't tell. Basically, I'm doing something here and... Oh, no, just fuck off. Um, I'm doing something here and everyone, or, or a lot of people on the internet reckon the best way to get this thing to happen is to enter, pay, and leave and repeat that process three times. I don't know if that's true or not, but it certainly can't hurt. What we're doing here is we are looking for a legendary fish. And I'm going to try and get it once or twice, and then I'm not going to bother because it's really shitty and not worth the effort, and it just takes so long, and I hate the fishing in this game. It's just not actually that much fun. So, we're looking for the Hylian Loach, everyone's favourite. The Hylian Loach is found in one place alone, over in the lily pads by the side. If you spook it or fail to catch it, it'll fuck off to the centre, where it will wait for something like 45 minutes before returning. Which is obscene. There's a fish over there, that's not the loach, but let's let's cast in that direction anyway and have a look. Because I don't want to get too close. He's very easily spooked, is the old loach. Yeah, he's not there. Well, apparently this enter and then leave three times thing is complete nonsense. Unless, unless this is only the second time, because I have to actually leave a third time. Well, let's do another quick scan of this area. See, these are all just Hyrule bass, whatever they are. I think they're just bass, yeah. Oh god, oh god, he's got a creepy mouth. Okay, let's leave and enter again one final time. See, this is how I always did this, is you just enter and leave repeatedly until you see the fucker. Um, there's a way you can kind of spy in if you use the... Um, if you use the... Not, not my words, apparently. If you use the Iron Boots and the Zora Tunic, you can like see from a distance whether he's spawned in, but I always find that really difficult to do. So yeah, it was always just for me, it was always just come in, see if he's there, and if he's not, come back in and see if he is there. And he's end of Lochi boy. Nope. Oh, no, he's there! The fucker is there! Oh, yes. Right, let's try and cast. Reach right over. Yeah, look at him! Yeah! Well, at least that's enough. We've seen him. That makes me happy. Whether we catch him or not, I don't know, because he's easily spooked and takes fucking forever to reel in, so... I was using this when I was a kid, I wore iron boots to, um, and the zero tunic because I believed it made me better at fishing. It doesn't, as far as I'm aware, but I was like, oh, fuck me. I was like, well, if I'm anchored, then I'll be, I'll be harder to pull away, because I think I thought that fishing was like, you versus the fish and like a tug of war, which, yes, it kind of is, I suppose, in a way. Um, but certainly it doesn't make any difference, but it's kind of a, a slight comfort thing now. Right, I need to actually aim myself very carefully. Let's try there. So I want to make sure the other two don't grab it in the meantime as well. Right, that's a decent angling, at least. Oh, bugger! Oh, you can f Oh, I've scared him off! Right, now he's gone to the bloody middle, and I say I'll wait there for like 45 minutes. It looks like he's at the surface, but he's not. Um, he comes up and gulps air every now and again, and it looks like you can get him, but you can't! It's really shitty like that. Um, well, at least I'll reel this prick in in the meantime. This is the issue, right? If they- at if the- if the other pricks attack, um, then they'll- um, let's see how big that fish is. Five pounds. Fuck off. Um, yeah, if the, if you reel one of the other fish in, it'll spook him away, um, which is irritating. See, where has he gone? Is he in the middle? Or has he actually returned back? I think he's in the deep part in the middle. Well, I'll do one final search over here, I suppose. In case he has returned to the lily pads, because sometimes he does. Um, but yeah, you also can't get too close to the lily pads because you walking around will freak him out as well. Here, yeah, loachy boy. Alright, one that almighty oh, splashing balls. No, I think he must be in the middle. It's annoying, it's, it's quite difficult to check. I was like, you can go underwater and spy around a bit, but it's not easy either. Yeah, he's down there, so he'll just sit down there for fucking ages. Right, I'm gonna try one once more, so. Oh, maybe there is something in the three, leave and enter three times theory. I'm gonna do it again, certainly, and see if he appears. 
Right, I think this is the third ghost. So it, might, it might be on the next one, but I'm going to have to look at this time anyway. Because there's also one final thing I want to talk about. I'm not going to show it off, but I just want to talk about it. Uh, Master Quest, which you unlock for completing the game. Um, you can play through the game again, and it's slightly different. It's the classic, you deal, you deal, you take twice damage, which is mildly irritating. The entire game is mirrored left to right, which is just a slight brain fuck if you're used to this game like I am. And finally, and most importantly, which is actually quite cool, all the dungeons have been redesigned. So they're actually quite different inside, and they are harder. Uh, you're not a loach, are you? No, none of you are loaches. Yep, yeah, let's try another thing. So that is quite cool, and at some point, I don't know, if people are interested, I'll do a Master Quest video long in the future, but I assure you it is going to be long in the future. Because um, I guess I could basically just do an episode in each dungeon. But they are a bit longer, so it'd almost be more than that. It's probably not worth it, but it's kind of cool. Um, and even in the original version, so Master Quest um, was on that Zelda Collector's Edition disc, or the, or the Ocarina of Time bonus disc, both the GameCube ones. And even then, it just it had redesigned dungeons. It's quite, it's quite a cool concept. Um, and I wish Master Mode in some of the other Zelda games was something more like that, that they actually make it a bit different for people who've played the game a lot, because otherwise just double damage doesn't really feel like it's that different of a game, really. I always wanted cleverer AI, but I think that's quite hard to do. Right, if he's here again, he fucking is. Right, okay, uh, it's confirmed. You, you, three entrances and leaves, and the fourth one, every time, apparently, will summon the loach. That's actually really worth knowing that that's real. Come on, you little bastard, bite. Bite me, you little shit. Yes, I've got the fucker! Right, now I just gotta wait for like 45 minutes, that'll be fun. Yeah, I thought that was gonna happen. Hey, what happened? You lost it! And then, don't you know, he fucks off to the middle and then goes. I mean, at least it's easier in a sense you just have to hold directions and not like the fucking Twilight Princess where you gotta go really get in with your arms for a while. But hey, at least we we hooked him and stuff like that. Basically, if you catch him, it says he's at least £35. You can't keep him. You take him over to this guy and he says, that's amazing, I'll give you a reward. And it's 50 quid. It's just not worth it. And I'll be here all bloody night. And uh, like I just said, it's not worth it. And here, we've kind of, well, we've got everything done in like just over an hour. So we can actually be conceivably edited into one episode, which is actually quite nice. Um, so that has been Ocarina of Time, the bonus episode, number one. There's a second bonus episode, which I haven't recorded yet, uh, and that's going to be, well, I've recorded bits of it, but also not other bits of it, so it'll be a slightly strange one, where I'm going to go through what makes a visualizer and how I designed this one from scratch, literally from the, the, it starts with some scrawlings I made on a bus on a piece of paper, and it ends with the, the visualizer as you currently see it. So that's quite cool. Um, and that'll be later on in the week. And then we are on to Pikmin. So I hope you will join me then. Thank you very much for being around for one final hideous bonus episode. And as I say, please do let me know in the comments if you watched it in hideous 3D mode with me. Because that's kind of mildly cool. Thank you very much. And good day.